Hi there. I'm Joran Jenkins, and I'm here today to talk to you about my collaborative uh, posters, the posters that I've created to help our clients choose their divorce process, and once they've chosen, understand the collaborative process if that was their choice. This is one of the posters that I use in my consults. It helps them understand what's going to happen uh, in collaborative, what the benefits are, and, and what the key elements are to the collaborative uh, process. Um, one of the things I talk about is that it preserves relationships. And quite frankly, this is the biggie for me um, because I'm all about relationships. And I think that um, having been a child of divorce and uh, having gone through my own divorce, I understand the significant losses that people go, go through when they're litigating and um, and significant relationships in their lives are lost because of the litigation and destroyed. How many families, if you're a lawyer or even a mental health professional, how many families do you know of where um, the mother-in-law and the daughter were good friends, the daughter got divorced, and she lost her friend, the mother-in-law, because the mother-in-law was related to the son and had no choice. Um, how many of us have had divorces where uh, the friends of the couple had to choose which, which spouse they were going to continue to be friends with, and the other spouse lost that friend? Um, that doesn't necessarily happen in collaboration. In fact, it doesn't have to happen at all. So we talk about it preserves relationships. And that's not even, by the way, touching on the children who no longer speak to their parents uh, in those divorces where the children are anywhere near adulthood and, and can actually stop talking to a parent if they think that that parent is doing the wrong thing or handling the divorce badly. Um, the collaborative process is confidential and private. That's it. It's confidential and private. And quite often, um, we are allowed to file our documents in the courthouse, even though we have to eventually go to court to get that final decree. We can file those uh, documents either naked, we say, where they're not really filled out with the numbers, or um, under seal. So it's confidential and private, certainly in the process and in the discussions and in the issues that are dealt with. But it can also be confidential and private as far as the bottom line goes as well in court. It's faster than litigation. We know this uh, litigation. I've had cases that took five years to get from petition to final judgment, and then continued on with appeals and post-judgment litigation. Um, it's faster than litigation. We have collaborative cases that get finalized in three to four months, sometimes five or six months. Still, it's faster than litigation. And of course, it's less expensive than litigation. Um, we talk about that with our potential clients. I have a poster that discusses the costs of the various processes. And even though collaborative process can run around 30 grand um, for a, for a, a, a normal um, middle class family, um, that's still less than the 200 grand that going to trial will cost the normal middle class family. You get customized results in collaboration. And you know, um, this is on this poster, especially because I sometimes forget this one. Uh, the fact that we can put things in your settlement agreement that cover your unique family because that's what you want in there. And my best example of that is the fact that in court, I can't get a judge to order dad to pay for college or mom to pay for college or anybody to pay for college because that just doesn't happen in Florida. It's not in our statutes. But any family that wants their kids to go to college can write into their agreement how they're going to divvy up that expense. Is the kid going to pay for it? Is mom going to pay for it? Are they going to split that expense? Is the kid going to pay for 10 percent of it? They can put in their agreement that as long as the kid gets certain grades, um, dad will pay for whatever. Uh, so they can customize their agreement. I tell people, as long as you don't agree to do something illegal, you can agree to whatever you want, and a court will enforce that if it comes to that later, which, of course, it never does. Because once they've agreed on something that, that is what they wanted, then they're much more likely to be able to perform that agreement. And then we've got the um, disqualification element. And this, you know, a lot of clients think that that's a huge stick. Um, never mind the carrot, the carrot, the carrot, the carrot, the carrot. 
they think that's a huge stick. And I have to explain to them that in my litigation cases, I get, I get clients who've already had three attorneys. They swap attorneys out the minute that they get mad or don't like what an attorney is telling them or they're sick of an attorney or the attorney is sick of them, which happens. Um, you're in litigation long enough with a client. You've, you've been in bed with that client for a long time. You get tired of each other and the client decides to move on to a fresh face. Um, so that disqualification agreement, yes, it's a stick, but it's hardly, um, it's hardly a club. It's a little bit of a stick. Um, and, and I tell clients, you don't worry about that. If you actually impasse this case, which is so unlikely, but if you actually do, I'll find your new attorney, I'll introduce you, and we'll turn over the files, what we can, and you'll be fine. You'll move forward. You'll, you know, I'd hate to see you in litigation because that's what we're trying to avoid in this whole thing. But, and that only gets invoked if you end up litigating. So it's, it's, uh, but it's something we need to talk about. And so I include it here. And then the last key element is it's transparent and honest. So it's confidential and private, but within the process, it's transparent and honest. And of course, that's all because we're discussing your interests. We're not talking about your positions. We're only caring about your long-term goals and where you're going with your life, where you want to be in five years. And that's it. That's the key elements of the collaborative conflict resolution process. This applies uh, not just in divorce. It applies in any kind of breakup. I had a, um, a, a consult come to see me recently who wanted to divorce his parents. He wanted to be emancipated. Um, I had uh, 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 partnership disputes where the partners were getting divorced. They happened to be brothers. They didn't want to have anything to do with each other. Once dad died, they had a business and they had to figure out what they were going to do with it. That's a divorce. Anything that looks like a divorce can be handled uh, with the conflict, the, the, co the collaborative conflict resolution process um, because uh, they, all of these types of divorces involve emotions. Employee, employer. You know, if the employer doesn't really want to lose the employee, um, this is the perfect process to uh, enable them to uh, keep that relationship in place and still um, negotiate the dispute and figure out what they can do to make it right. So that's the key elements poster.